Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be building a budget gaming PC for around £280 and we've got all our parts here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down all the parts we're using and why I chose them and then we're going to roll a little montage of us building it and then we're going to test it in some games including Black Ops 6 because that has just come out because it'd be interesting to know if this £280 gaming PC can run modern games like Black Ops 6. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on with the PC build. Alright guys, so to start things off, we will start with the CPU we've gone with today. This is the Ryzen 5 5500. It's the 5600 little brother. Now, it doesn't quite perform as good as the 5600, but you can find this quite cheap on AliExpress. As I think I've mentioned in other videos, if you guys aren't buying CPUs off AliExpress, then you're honestly missing out, especially if you flip PCs. Sometimes they have really good sales on, and I got this Ryzen 5 5500 for £56.86. Alright guys, I just quickly wanted to mention that if you buy your parts from AliExpress whilst they got their sales on, you can actually find things like the 5500 for as low as £47. I recently picked one up for that price, but these prices are before the sale that recently went on throughout November and to the start of December. But either way, at this price, it's still a good price to performance CPU. Of course, it doesn't come with a stock cooler, but we won't be using a stock cooler in this build today anyway. But these CPUs are actually brand new. Every single one I've received that I've bought from there has come sealed and there's been no visible damage to it. It doesn't look like it's been used. So it's a real good place to get um, your CPUs from. AliExpress is hit or, hit or miss. I think it's great to get CPUs from there. But certain things like graphics cards, they haven't got a lot of options. So sometimes it's better to look on eBay and other places. For RAM, we went with the Clev Bolt X. This is brand new because actually, shout out to Tech Lab UK. He prompted me of this, well, he posted this deal on his Twitter or his X account. And this RAM was going for, I believe it was around £26 on Amazon, which honestly is not a bad deal whatsoever. It was actually £25 for this RAM. So 16 gigabytes, two times eight sticks at 3200 megahertz. Now I normally pay when I'm buying second hand, I normally pay about £20, that's kind of the mark I like to go for. But if I'm getting brand new RAM for £25, you really can't go wrong. So massive thanks to Tech Lab UK for prompting me of this deal. I will leave a link to his um, channel in the description. He posts some great content as well. Now for the graphics card, we got this on a pretty good deal. And this is a GTX 1070. Now it's actually an ASUS model and I will show you the box that it came in. It's obviously quite a basic model because it is a blower style card and it's not the best looking. However, I got this graphics card locally for £50 and I have tested it since buying it and it works absolutely fine. So this is what we're going to be using. And this build is going to be very similar to the £350 build except rather than using new power supply and a new case and new cooler and everything else we're cutting down the price a bit by using a slightly worse cpu but we are saving some money so to call the ryzen 5 5500 we have gone for this assassin x120 refined se plus which is a two fan configuration air, air cooler this will do a great job calling the 5500 as the 5500 isn't going to run hot anyway and especially with this beefy cooler on there. Now I paid, I think it was around £16 for this cooler. Now for storage, this is also something I've got off eBay. It's a PC specialist, 256GB M.2. Now I'm sure it's just Gen 3, yeah, Gen 3 drive. But I only paid £11.55 for this. And that's including delivery, so that price is pretty insane, honestly. But what we will be doing is I did pick up a hard drive. I've seen this 2TB Toshiba hard drive for £10.99 on eBay. So that way we've got a fast boot drive, a massive hard drive for um, games, and in total our storage has cost us £22.45 for 2 plus terabytes of storage. We can't complain about that one. Now, of course, I've kind of skipped across the motherboard and don't take any notice of this box because I just put it in there and threw away the box it came in. So 
So once again, we've, once again we've gone with a B450 motherboard, and this is the exact same one as the um, £350 build. It's a B450M Pro 4-CB. It's a very basic um, motherboard, however it is okay for builds like this. The 5500 doesn't have doesn't draw a lot of power anyway, um, so this board would be absolutely fine. One of the biggest issues with this board is number one, it hasn't got many um, CP. Uh, sorry, it hasn't got many system fan headers, so you kind of have to daisy chain them across. I believe it's only got one fan header for the um, case fans and obviously one for the CPU. And another thing, this is an OEM board, um, and when I tried finding the BIOS updates for this, it wasn't actually on ASRock's website. This is, I think, from CyberPower's pre-built PCs. I had to do some digging and look around and figure out what was going on but pretty much I think these are built for companies and because of that companies like CyberPower have to provide the BIOS update themselves so it does lack um, constant updates because B450 motherboards still are getting updates especially with good um, brands but this one unfortunately doesn't have many updates. I think the latest BIOS version you can run on this is 2023 um, and whether the company CyberPower will update this, I don't know. But that is one downside to buying this board. But it was only £41.95. Of course, it doesn't include um, a CMOS battery because they never ship abroad with a CMOS battery. But aside from that, it's a very basic board, but it'll get the job done for what we need it for. Now, moving on to the power supply. We're going to be using the EVGA 650BQ, which is an 80 plus bronze unit. Sorry, I didn't have that in the camera very well. Now, I picked this up locally. I was quite lucky to get this for only £20. It's got all the necessary, necessary cables we need as well. And I have tested this with a power supply tester. And, I mean, you can look at it and it's not very dusty. It's in really good condition. And the power supply tester showed that it was working absolutely fine. So we got a really good deal for the power supply as well. Now last but not least, the case we're going to be using. I might have to come out with the camera a bit. This is the Game Max Infinity Mini. And I picked this up, this up brand new off Amazon for £46. It was £46 and 8 pence for this case brand new off Amazon. So just a recap. The case, the CPU cooler is brand new, and the RAM is brand new at £25. So we've got a combination of new and used parts. Like I said before, the CPU um, itself is pretty much brand new, or at least they look brand new. I'm pretty sure that companies must buy these in bulk without the coolers on them, and that's how they can sell them cheaper. I'm not entirely sure. And the motherboard does say refurbished, but they always look brand new, so... So this PC isn't going to look cheap, worn out or anything, it's going to look brand new and for £280, hopefully it's going to perform pretty good as well. But now, let's get on with building the PC.
Alright guys, so just an update, it's actually the following day and obviously when we um, when I done the video yesterday I was speaking about how this motherboard actually comes over, I know it's hard to see but the back of the um, case only comes to here and I said maybe this case is mainly designed for ITX boards. Now that isn't necessarily the case, it's just that some micro ATX boards are just bigger than others, more so in the width. Now, I um, ordered this the other day for future builds, which is a Maxun B450, well, it's a Challenger B450M. And after opening it, I realised that this is actually the perfect size to fit inside of here. If we were to mount this, it would actually just fit perfectly, and we would then be able to use um, the back part for the fans. Now, one other thing to note, talking about these fans that it come with, I um, turned the PC on. And all the fans spun, but when I pressed the LED button, well, first of all, one only one fan was um, lighting up. When I pressed the LED button, it just clicked, and it made a real horrible smell, like an electrical smell. So I switched the whole PC off. And what I think's happened is somehow there's some sort of short or some sort of issue with the um... yeah. So what the issue is is that this little RGB hub as you call it, they come pre-installed. I think it's dead. I honestly think it's dead. Either that or two of the fans are faulty on there, but everything else is fine. Obviously, the thing is, I knew the power supply was fine because I always test them with a power supply tester. So so luckily, I um, obviously just turned the PC off straight away, so nothing else is damaged. The motherboard's all working, but yeah, instantly, I pressed the LED button up here. This fan lit up already, but it wouldn't change colour, and when I pressed this LED button, it just clicked. And I, I smelled some sort of electrical um, burning smell. So I was really worried that it had fried the motherboard or done something. Everything is fine, except these fans are faulty. Now, I could send this back to um, Amazon and get a refund or get a new one sent out. But honestly, it's just not worth a hassle in my opinion. What I'm going to do instead is install these um, thermal right fans here. Now, I've got one for the back. And I have got two reverse fans as well, which I think are in here, which came today. So these are thermal right as well, and I've used these quite a few times. But this will mean if we swap that motherboard out, we can put the two reverse blade fans for intake on the on the rear. The motherboard is going to line up a lot better. So we'll have two intake fans and one exhaust, and we won't worry about the bottom. Of course, this adds to the cost, and if you were doing it yourself, well, first of all, you know, if the fans were faulty, you would just send it back. So, even though we were in a budget of £280, with the fans and the hub, which we've had to order, it's going to be about £20. So, it's more towards £300. One good thing is this motherboard was actually slightly cheaper than this ASRock one. Only by about £4, this was about £38. But we're going to put that in there because it would be absolutely fine for the Ryzen 5 5500. And eventually, once the RGB hub comes, because that's all we're waiting for, it's going to look a lot better. So, I'm obviously not going to show the process of swapping the motherboard out, but that's what's going on and that's why it will look different once I show the reveal of what it looks like. So first we tested Fortnite and we had an average FPS of 227. Now this was my first game on, so that can actually affect the FPS. But on average I would say you'll get anywhere from 210 to 240 FPS depending on the game mode. We then tested GTA 5 at high settings at 1080p. Now this was a very smooth and enjoyable experience. We spent a bit of time roaming the city and being a maniac, but inside of the city we averaged around 105 FPS. One thing to note um, is that Afterburn did start before the game had launched, so because the menus are capped at 60 FPS, the average FPS while starting the game was lower. But we did head into the countryside and our FPS did increase quite a bit. 
Now, if you get anything like 160 FPS or higher, you do get a lot of stutters within GTA 5. That's why you can put a 120 FPS cap in NVIDIA control panel and that fixes the issue. But once we were roaming the countryside, our average FPS went up to around 131. The next game we tested was Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p on the high preset. Now we actually just run the in-game benchmark for this and we averaged a very decent 82 FPS. Now on to Black Ops 6. Now actually this PC that I built was actually built in October or whenever Black Ops was released. But it took a while for me to get this video out anyway. But either way, I never play Black Ops or Call of Duty for that matter. It's been a few years, so this is my first game on in a very long time. I didn't even have certain binds set up for like grenades and stuff. I just literally set my movement binds and started shooting people. And honestly, I didn't do too bad considering I haven't played in years. I pretty much had a 1kd. <laughs> Look at me. Now we had to use in-game statistics for the FPS counter because for some reason Afterburner wouldn't work for me. Also this game is pretty demanding especially on your graphics card. Our PC did struggle to run it. We had to run this at the minimum preset and we had to use the Nvidia image scaling to boost our FPS that little bit extra. Now it's hard to say exactly what our average FPS was. We were hovering anywhere between 70 all the way up to 110. So I would say on average we'll probably get an 80 to 90 FPS. Now if you wanted to play this game on an older PC, you would probably have to get a fairly decent graphics card. Maybe a 20 series GPU. They kind of go a fairly cheap nowadays. But the GTX 1070 definitely did struggle in this title. But what can you expect from a brand new title and a nearly 8 year old graphics card? Overall, I'm really happy with the outcome of this PC. For quite a low budget, this is quite a capable eSports title gaming PC. And the thing is, it has got a good upgrade path being on the AM4 platform. You could go all the way up to a 5700X3D and that would be perfectly fine on this board. And then like I said, if you got a slightly better graphics card, maybe like a 2070 or even if you were just to spend a bit more money in the future and get something like a 3060, that would perform much better in the modern games. And also if you've watched to the end, comment Specbench Squad so I know who the real ones are. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.